Here we go. It's Dirt Pile number three, short track 2022. And we are about to start looking around. We see some of the competitors. There's Mike Hake, longtime friend and competitor. And we see a lot of the younger crew and crowd hanging around. It's a pretty windy day. People here are kind of tentative about going to the front line. I know I've got no aspirations. I'm looking for a good workout, so, and, and we're off. It was kind of a quick horn this time, but I think it caught some people off guard, but I'm good where I am because I'm just looking for a good workout. I did the TFR ride earlier in the day, so I'm not sure how my legs are going to feel around the third or fourth lap. But we're good to go. Last short track, which was, I believe, short track number one, I was riding the enduro bike, but I went to grab it today and it was like not working. So here I am. A ramming and a thumping behind Mike, and he normally does the open group, but the open group has gotten so fast that he decided to step it down a little bit and see what he could do in the expert group. The rider right in front of him is Paul something or other. I met him at the end of the race. Turns out that we raced uh, a race at, um, oh, where was that? Um, in the mountains a week or so ago, and he recognized me. Regardless, we see that I'm not last this time. Fort Collins guy behind me, and it looks like I'm starting to lose a little bit of ground here, but in truth, I'm I'm lagging back just a little bit because I know there's going to be a big pile up, and why waste matches early on unless I'm going to try to pass at this point? But these guys are just too fast to pass. Looking around, you can see everybody in a pretty much a straight line, choosing their line through the corner, and this is where the race is won or lost. If you can hold your momentum and hold your speed through the corners. You, you save major time and major watts that you can use to run up some of the little steeps that are about to occur later on. Here's the section here where I know that everyone's gonna come in bottleneck, so I can hang back and know that at this point, I'm back on the wheel and I didn't waste any energy trying to get on the wheel early. This is a little trickier than it looks, that little corner, because when you go in there at speed, there's an issue with it being a little bit loose. Behind me, I can see the Fort Collins type cycling team rider starting to move with me and the rest of the posse as it starts to string out a little bit. I definitely like this rear view. You get a chance to see what the competitors are doing behind you because during the event, I had no idea who was behind me, whether I was in last place. I figured there were at least one or two people behind, but I didn't really know. There's that little dirt pile mound, and you can see there's a little shortcut taking the steep line. I didn't know what that really was because the guys in front of me didn't take that, but now I know that that's the line that I want to take. And in this event, I didn't end up taking it until the third lap. Being on the Cannondale, it's got steeper head tube angle, and I wasn't certain how it was going to handle with the cross-country tires, but it did quite well. Ramming and a thumping through here. You can get an idea of how fast we're actually flying through here. And I know that the big men that are in the next group, the open group, they are so much faster than the rest of us. And they are able to hold their speed in the corners because they know the limits of their machine. I seem to switch bikes enough that I don't really learn the limits. And this Cannondale is not a fun bike to ride with only 100 mil of travel, 650B wheels, 2.1s, and cross-country tires, with, I believe, probably a 70-degree head tube angle. Not the most fun bike, so I don't take it out that often. It's usually reserved for XC racing, because it is, in fact, light. Getting the drone-like shots here, following people through the, the twisties. Here's a section where the big men can gain a lot of speed if they are willing to push their machine. I love this little section here coming through the trees. We get a chance to let the bike flow. And it's a lot of 
areas where the less skilled are afraid to push their bikes. You can get some ground here. You can see I'm getting a little bit of ground on the FC C team guy behind me, and I am looking to set myself up for the little steep. Looks like that there are two guys behind me. I wasn't aware of that during the race, and they have separated themselves from the rabble. That little run up there is pretty tough, but everybody made it with pretty much ease. Coming down through here, it looks like there's this little sharp left-hand turn. Seems like it's steeper when you're actually riding it, but again, it looks like it got some ground. And this little run-up area, it's kind of fun if you know the course. And this is the area coming up is where I seem to lose a little bit of ground because it's just so twisty. And I felt the front wheel wash out a little bit on some of this, and so I've been tentative. But that being said, it's a good place to hone my skills. And week after week, I get faster and faster and faster. And it was probably this bike versus the enduro bike last week. But I was 30, 40 seconds a lap faster this week than the previous week. And that week, I had uh, didn't do the Tuesday ride. So I was fresher. So with a little bit of practice and a little bit of um, lighter bike, it makes a big difference through here. But this is definitely fun, and it's nice to be somewhat in the mix. And definitely, the two guys behind me have, have like dispatched everybody else that was behind. Kind of good to see. I can see Mike Hake there in the green heading off. He's got some good distance. And this little section here, I could probably do that a little faster. And each time I practice it, I give it a go. And there's more traction than I think there really is. At this point, it's starting to open up a little bit. A little bit straighter and this is where the horsepower of the big men can really be utilized and this is where i try to gain some advantage because i wasn't pushing it through the corners so i have something to try to like distance myself from my fellow competitors behind but that's just not happening definitely like to to see how this course would be to practice during the week how much of a difference it would actually make I suspect some of the competitors actually do come at it on the week in the week but or weekend but you're not really supposed to be out here unless you're like a new Belgium employee looking up front we see that rider Paul isn't too far ahead of me and it looks like I might be able to reel him in soon enough I know at some point I do and it isn't until the last 50 yards of, of the race, if that 50 feet that he manages to get around me on the last lap. Another steep run up here. They added this for the cyclocross people with steps at one point. They removed the steps for, for this event. And here we go, lap number one. We'll keep talking about the, how this looks here. This is the section that they added with the little uh, back tire logo. And if you're really pushing it here, you can catch a little bit of air over these little whoop de doos And some of the open riders were catching some sick air. And I wish I had my camera. It'd be cool just to sit there and just try to, you know, practice photography. Here we go. This is where if you've got a motor, you're going to use it. And it looks like, yep, the two guys that were behind me, clearly that gentleman had a lot of horsepower. Not quite certain why he wasn't trying to pass earlier or didn't get a better start but it looks like he's about ready to check out the the first city guy oh i guess i was calling him fort collins like first city maybe that's your sponsor and we passed paul this time looks like he maybe didn't know you were behind him but i know that he's going to be behind me for like a long ways perhaps there's motivation when there's a carrot that maybe just a little bit faster than you would normally go that will help you push yourself to stay in contact with those in front of you. Coming around here, this is a section where I took a really bad line. Definitely it's the outside line that's better. And I waste a little energy here. You can see how that, that rider gets a little bit of a gap on me, but I stand up and try to close in. Well, that's about the first lap. And unfortunately my camera died during the race, so or ran out of battery or stopped. 
So, a good time was had by all. Until next time, peace.